Okay. Hi, guys. I'm Danny. I'm Mad. Um, and today we are going to be reviewing the Halo 3 original soundtrack. Yes, which, uh, ashamedly, I have not yet played the game, but we'll work on that after we finish this video. The fact that you haven't played the game, I think, is good, because you'll be an impartial judge. Uh, I, I think you might be an expert. Yeah, are you qualified to, to review this game? Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Review the soundtrack? Yeah, I think so. I mean, after six years of music school and about that much time freelancing in the field, I think I, I at least will have, hopefully, a few interesting things to say. Okay, great. <laughs> Halo is the uh, kind of like the quintessential shooter of the 2000s. Um, it was like the main launch title for the original Xbox. Um, super popular, very beloved story and characters. Uh, so, And the soundtrack is equally as revered. So. Ah, so I, if I criticize it too harshly, I might... You know, wake up the trolls. Yes, definitely. Okay. I, think, I think so. I think okay. so. I'll be, I'll be honest but careful then, I think. Great. I know you did a little research on uh, on our old friend Marty and uh, and Michael, our old friends Marty and Michael, who were the uh, co-composers? Co yeah. Is that, a word? Is that what you would say? Yeah, sure. Okay. I, th I think that they co-wrote the soundtrack, um, and it seems like they still do a bit of work together and have worked together for a long time. I, I found out that they met each other in college, which I think is awesome. <laughs> there isn't that much to be found about Michael speaking about the soundtrack, um, but it seems like Marty is really interested in speaking about it. So in Marty O'Donnell's words, he said he wanted the Halo 3 soundtrack to get back to the kind of orchestral roots of the composition of the series and wanted everything to feel a bit more formal, a bit more orthodox. Halo 3 is definitely like the more refined and like uh, you know, real. I was thrilled as a classical musician to know that live musicians had been hired to do the soundtrack. Having an actual six piece, 60 piece orchestra and 24 voice chorus is, first of all, pretty big budget. Right. And, <laughs> and second of all, exciting. So I'm, I'm interested to hear what's possible with live musicians rather than just a little, little MIDI computer sure. synthesized thing going on. So We'll, we'll jump right into this. Um, we're going to start with uh, the, perhaps the most famous, is the uh, menu music. This is what we see lots of memes of online. Okay, okay, so tell me, tell me, tell what's what's going on? What's going on here? Well, um, sounds like some sign, some kind of like Gregorian chant inspired, um, like maybe like evocative of monks or something like that, um, happening. I've definitely seen that. Uh, I've definitely seen monks. The word monks used to describe what they're doing here. Excellent. So um, I don't know if that's like a musical thing, monks. Uh, yeah, I like mean, the, a monk, monkle descri description, <laughs> monkian description. Monkian. Yeah, my first impression here is like it's it's definitely evoking kind of a a backward looking feeling. And this is the menu music you said, right? Yeah. So this is yeah. It's like well. like setting the scene. Sure. Um, my other just thought is that if you're gonna hire a whole bunch of singers to do this, you could have gotten a better choral tone. It seems sort of untrained, and that could be a choice in terms of just like these are like regular monks. Mm -hmm. These aren't like professional monks <laughs> singing. <laughs> got, it, got it. I don't know. Um, let's let's listen further. Yeah. Okay. A common thing in opera or other types of theater is this concept of light motif, um, which is when a musical theme or a compositional theme is tied to a specific character or idea or a situation. I read um, a lot of reviews of the soundtrack that um, said that they made really excellent use of leitmotif. I don't mm -hmm. know if you have any like particular things that come to mind um, when thinking about this. Like if there's, you know, always like the hero music or always like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, the end of that track has this this piano hit. And uh, that probably more than anything in the soundtrack is the uh, is the recurrent sound, the recurrent, like, emotion. Yeah, like so. the touchstone for, like, a sense of home is, right. or... Um, cool, yeah, so leitmotif for leitmotif. any of you non-classical music nerds out there. Okay, um... 
So done with uh, the many music, now we're going to the first song that's featured in the campaign of Halo 3, and that is Luck. Brave, a natural leader. But you had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Again, with the, the vocals, I'm just like, this is, could have been a MIDI choir, and I'm... I'm saying that knowing full well that I'm taking myself out of a job, but I just feel like if you're gonna have professional singers, and maybe they weren't professional singers, who knows? Well, maybe didn't... they were friends from college. Maybe. There are so many more color choices available to you when you use live performers than are being utilized in this score, and that is frustrating. Sure. I mean, it's definitely really dramatic. Right. I I love the um, kind of previous theme of the chorus and strings, um, and then the huge full orchestral cres crescendo happening right. Right. Um, to a big hit. Is there like a is there like a big moment in the game? The that meteorite. Triggers that? The, the human meteorite. Yeah. There you go. Okay. That, uh, in that moment. Yeah. That totally makes sense to me. And then you know maybe he's emerging out of a crater or something for the like kind of spooky bassoon sure, situation. Sure. I don't know. But yeah, I can definitely like there's something very cinematic about this composition. Not looking at anything while I'm hearing it, I can definitely visualize. Well it's very cinematic but it's not like a uh, Hideo Kojima game which is you know a bat a series of like annoyingly long movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but not a fan the, of cutscenes, just, yeah. I should let you know. Which, this will be, this will be good for you then, this, <laughs> this series, but the, um, I think it's only like an hour of cutscenes for this entire, like, you know, culmination game. Whereas, I think Metal Gear Solid 4, which was like the end of that saga, I think it's like eight hours of cutscenes. Or, no, 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 no. I think it's, maybe it's five hours of cutscenes. It's crazy. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're great. Um, <laughs> something I'm also interested to experience myself in relation to this score and, um, how the... The soundtrack that was released on disc um, and for streaming services and stuff. Because, I mean, on CDs... On floppies. Yes. Oh, no, not that kind of disc. <laughs> CDs were still a thing when this came out, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> this is 2007, okay. this game. Marty O'Donnell was saying that he organized the soundtrack that was released um, to simulate a playthrough of the game, but that your own oh. playthrough of the game might look different interesting like some of the right, sections right, might be right. longer or shorter or whatever depending on how how you played through we're not leaving them here yeah you're not oh, crazy fool why do you always jump one of these days you're gonna land on something as stubborn as you are and i don't do bits and pieces Good use of the choir there. Just yeah, want to say that. Good. I was. It's, I was just. I'm. I, you'll see that I was smiling during that. Just because it literally that. Um, I guess that string build to that note is very a very obvious moment in the game. I like want to do the voice lines. So, really? Uh, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. There's uh, <laughs> games like Dark Souls or Bloodborne that have great soundtracks. They are partially because they're not meant to be a cinematic or story like. You may associate with like a boss fight or something, but this they're really like distinct moments and characters. That it seems like the orchestration is really, really thoughtful. Uh, and I know that Marty O'Donnell... <laughs> Marty. Marty. Our friend Marty. Um, he said that... What's that? Bungie. Um, is supposed to be creating culture, not responding to it. I But I am noticing some classical influences. Like that part particularly sounded like Copeland or Barber or something to me. Um, just that kind of big string crescendo, something hanging out, and then having the woodwinds come in. Sure. It's like a little more pastoral or something. Okay, well I think uh, that's... that's a wrap on luck. Now we're moving on to Grave Mind. That was very cool. It's, um... Almost giving me kind of like Halloween vibes with the like screechy strings. And yeah. um, I imagine that when you're listening on headphones or a headset, like the the kind of like whoa things that are <laughs> happening are kind of happening like across the soundstage. Sure, sure. Um, and I can imagine that being very effective. It reminds me of like bugs or like, right. you know. 
Yeah, that's that's basically exactly what's happening. Um, there are a lot of bugs around you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of the more, like, invasive species of songs in the soundtrack. <laughs> this plays while you're playing, and then it cuts... Then the music changes for the cutscene, a dramatic cutscene that happens after, but let's see. Can you see, Arbiter? The moment of salvation is at hand. It will not last. And like, even right there, you can tell, like, the way that the suite is arranged. Like, you're moving from one area into another, and that sure. could happen at any point in your playthrough. Right. Um, which I, I, I'm so excited to play through something like that, because I think it's so interesting the way yeah. that that's done. But... That's the first moment where it mattered to me that there were live singers. Because the beginning of that track, um, it's all almost too perfect. Mm -hmm. um, like, there's very little emotion or legato or anything in the voices. It's like... Bah, legato? Bah, bah. <laughs> it's like very clear pitch changes. Sure. Like, legato, like connection. I'm wondering what the choice was there to have the choir be this kind of like emotionless... Um, maybe it's to evoke a more timeless feel. Mm -hmm. Maybe O'Donnell's conception of um, like sort of music of the spheres, or you know, yeah. I'm I'm not sure exactly what. And Salvatore. Uh, and Salvatore. Can't forget Sorry. Salvatore. Can't, can't forget him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have contrary motion. Um, yeah, so the, I can't believe that this is the first time in the soundtrack that I'm hearing. Um, singers who are not moving in parallel or just stacking on top of each other. So this was a better use of the singers yes. than we've had up to this point. Yes, we've definitely. It. So let's uh, take a listen to One Final Effort. thing I think that the production on the piano in this track is very different than what we've heard before the piano on the other two tracks that we heard um it was sort of like easy listening like early aughts emotional piano sound mm -hmm. um and this um this sounds like more like we're gonna start the beginning of a piano concerto or something gotcha does that register with you do you not really okay <laughs> <laughs> let's listen on Yeah, we're uh, we're definitely we're heading toward the final battle. <laughs> and then here we got we got some good strings here. Let's let's get that. Awesome. I love the counterpoint here. Um, it it's almost like Celtic in its um, okay. kind of vibe for me, but it. It kind of reminds me of Prague or something, and mm -hmm. I know uh, O'Donnell has said he was pretty in, uh, inspired by um, Genesis and Jethro Tull, and I, I feel like the build here and the counterpoint and the layering kind of reminds me of that sort of that sort of style. Sure. Um, I like this a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, I think my earlier instinct was pretty spot on. Like the piano does get really incorporated into the orchestral. Sure. But it still really functions as a solo instrument. And I think um, I think it's very effective, at least for me, um, not having seen what's happening, but like having like your place as the player in this greater um, this greater machine that's moving forward. Sure. And um, like you've really got uh, you've really got the sense that something epic is about to happen and like we're pulling out the big guns and I don't know if that maps onto it. Yeah, so that's happening in the I game, would say but... I would say Marty and Mikey. We're spot on here then, because yeah. that's exactly what is what is happening here. It's a, uh, a you know a final it's a final effort. It's a final push with basically everything that's left uh, you know that's available to humanity and at this point. So yeah, and and it, but it's not it's not desperate. You know, there's this no. doesn't feel and just from my listening it doesn't feel desperate. It really sounds like um, one final confident effort.
Yeah, it seems like I don't know what happens. We in like that, parachuted in that off a cliff. And yeah, I was thinking like drove a car off a cliff and then <laughs> yeah, landed and just yeah, kept going. Exactly. <laughs> That's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. Also, the polyrhythms um, like really add to this kind of first of all prog feel, but mm. second of all, like the driving motion, the right. The like um, war machine, the Mad Max war machine. Exactly. Type vibe, definitely. Oh. Let's just listen through a little bit of the end. We've got a harp. <laughs> Very prog. Very surprising <laughs> non-chord tones there at the end. Um, that like da 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 is like very halo, right? Yes, like, that's definitely. like the the light motif. Um, this is a, this is I would say I would go so far as to say this is halo. Yeah, <laughs> great, amazing. This has been my favorite track so far. Um, right. I thought the ending was like a little cheesy, but you know you need that. You yeah, need that sometimes. Definitely. Okay, that was one final effort. Um, which is surprisingly not the final song that we're looking at. Oh. The brass was like, finally, our solo <laughs> moment. <laughs> We um, um, I mean, they've been they've been really beautifully colorizing everything else, but I don't think I've heard like a solid like fanfare, yeah. um, very triumphant. Anyway, I'd love to listen to the end. I'm fairly sure that this is the uh, trailer song, or at least that tail end is, um, and it definitely gives off that vibe. Yeah, totally. Um, of like you get like the like flash and then the release date is on, comes into frame. Uh, <laughs> <bah>! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that that's something that a lot of people would would experience as like quintessentially like the ba at the end of like a a dramatic pop song or like mm -hmm. in a musical right. like you always have the button at the end like that is like the the orchestral version of that in a arguably cheesy but also very satisfying way right like right, yes right. like we have concluded <laughs> like, that's kind like... of i think that's kind of halo is like very cheesy humans versus aliens lots of like you know like you're in a big green suit of armor very like a macho character but like very satisfying very fun you know well well done right? yeah I mean, that's definitely the impression that I'm getting from the music, particularly given that context from you. It sounds like really mission accomplished in terms of <laughs> in terms of the composition serving the the Gesamtkunstwerk, the total artwork of the game. Yeah, I think only uh, Marty and Mikey will uh, <laughs> will appreciate that last last compliment, <laughs> which is good. I have two I have two questions for you at the conclusion okay. of this. I'm ready. Um, and a reminder: this is before playing the game. Would you rate this a Zero or a one? A one being a... Um, a yes. A yes. And a zero being a no. What would you, what on would you the, say? On the binary scale, uh, this is definitely a one. This is a good, solid one. Yeah. And in that in that vein, does this make you want to play the game? Are you interested to see what the actual story is behind what the story is presented as in the music? Yes, definitely. Based on my experience listening to it and how evocative um, and dramatic a lot of the moments are, I'm really interested to see how that all lines up visually. Okay. Great. Well, that was the uh, Halo 3 original soundtrack. Thank you to uh, Marty and Mikey. Thanks, guys. Sorry <laughs> for making if this. you really don't like that nickname. <laughs> thank you, uh, Madeline, for going through this with us. Yeah, um, and thank you, Danny, for being such a... Fanboy. Such a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to our channel. There's a notification bell that you got to hit or else uh, you, you know, will disappear into the background of your YouTube account. Forever. For, forever. <laughs> Um, give the video a like, help us with the algorithm. Um, and uh, if you'd like to see more of us, you can also find us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Instagram, 
Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. On Twitch, we're at Doggy Dog and uh, at Mermad, as in mermaid with no I, uh, TV. Um, that'll all be in the description. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you for another another video. Thanks, guys. Good God. <laughs> good, good God, Marty. Good God. <laughs> okay.